I'm gonna talk about surface sealers and coatings for concrete. They're a great way to help extend your concrete's life. My name is Tyler Lay, and I love making these videos and sharing them with you to teach you about concrete. So one cool way to help extend the life of concrete is to make the surface impermeable, to make the surface so hard for outside chemicals to get in that they just don't. And we're gonna talk about three methods to do that today. Three different coating techniques. Impermeable, reactive, and vapor permeable. Let's start with the first one. An impermeable sealer is like a paint. It's like a paint that you put on the surface of the concrete. It's like this idea that nothing's gonna come in, nothing's gonna come out, I'm gonna seal everything up and it's gonna be great. Now, some types of impermeable sealers out there are epoxy paints or epoxy coatings, asphalt-based coatings, rubber cements, and there's a bunch more out there. You want these to be somewhat flexible to give a little bit as your concrete moves. Now, there's some challenges. Any coating you use may have some damaged regions. They may be built with those damaged regions or those damaged or nicks may happen over time and they'll allow these outside chemicals in at that spot. They're also gonna seal the moisture into your concrete. There's a lot of durability mechanisms and a lot of things with concrete in general that you don't want it to get too wet. That's a problem for ASR, it's a problem for freeze thaw, that's a problem for corrosion, lots of different things. These coatings are known to debond over time. The water gets underneath them and works them up and up and up and up and up and they fall off. Also, if your concrete cracks, you can't see them. It's like, whoa, I think that's a good thing. Cracks are ugly. Cracks are a warning. Cracks are your concrete telling you that it is uncomfortable. Another type of sealer, something called a reactive sealer. This is like a solid material that you put on the surface that's gonna react with the hydrating concrete and help make the pores smaller. Now, certain ones out there are anything called a hardener. Anything that you see in, in the hardware store that says it's a concrete hardener is falls into this category. Sometimes they're solids that you put on the concrete when it's wet. Sometimes they're liquids that you pour in, like a lithium, a calcium, or potassium silicate that actually form something called a water glass inside the concrete and helps plug the pores. Also, there's a thing called amorphous silica that also might help improve the reaction with calcium hydroxide to form more CSH. And there's others out there. Now, the challenges with these sealers is that they're challenging to quantify their benefits. Now, I'm not saying there's not benefits. Please, please, I think all of these are awesome tools that we should use in the right case at the right time, but it's hard to know exactly what you're getting. And it's not clear how much to put on the surface. It's not even clear how much of it's reacting or how much of it's just there for looks. And it only works at the surface. It only makes a thin layer at the surface. How thick is that? It depends on the material. Now, the last one I'm gonna talk about is something called a vapor permeable sealer. Now, these are something that I've studied, so I'm gonna know more about them, but I think they're very beneficial for the use of concrete. They allow no liquid in and out, but they allow vapor out of the concrete. And this can be huge. This can be very helpful. How do they work? Well, you pour this stuff on the surface, like a liquid, and it's gonna penetrate into the pores. Usually they're mixed with alcohols or some kind of other carrying agent to help them penetrate pretty deep inside the concrete. Now that alcohol or whatever may remove, and then whatever's left reacts with the concrete and forms this layer, this really thick, this kind of slick layer. This is where concrete that's not been reacted, and this is concrete that has been reacted. You can see the surface on the outside. And this surface is hydrophobic. What? What does that mean? That means water doesn't like it. It means water is scared of it. And if you look on the surface, water will bead up. It beads up and doesn't want to go inside. Now, if you try to put chlorides into these structures, this layer is gonna help hold those chlorides out. On the left, 
This is concrete that was not coated with anything and we can see the chlorides have penetrated. What are you talking about? Well, this is a chemical image. This gray value is the background. That means there's no chlorides there. This light blue means there's low chlorides, but a little bit. There's a little bit more here than there's a whole bunch here. This is after 180 days and look how deep it's penetrated into the concrete. Now this is the exact same concrete, these two, exact same concrete, but they have been treated with this silane material at the surface. And look, look how it's holding it back. Look how it's not getting in very deep. This is awesome. This is the type of performance that you want from some kind of membrane on your concrete. Here is that same thing as a graph, right? And you can see the, the control, the sample with no silane. Look how deep it is and look at the concentration. And the one with the silane, it's, it's greatly decreased the amount of chlorides that are penetrating inside of that concrete. So some of the types out there, there's silane, siloxane, latexes, there's a whole bunch of other polymers that do this type of stuff. The challenge is though, is that the moisture level of the concrete, when you apply these, is really important. Sometimes you actually want the concrete to be pretty wet. That's like a latex. Sometimes you want the concrete to be dry that's like a silane or a siloxane. It depends on the system. But either one of them, you want the water to leave and you want this polymer to form inside of the pores. Now, some other things is that their surface preparation is critical and they have high VOCs. That means they're not good to breathe, they're not good for the environment, and they're flammable. One of the huge benefits of these materials is that water can't get in and out, but vapor can. And if you think about most concretes, water isn't sitting on top of it. And so that means they're drying over time. And this is a huge benefit. One of the main tools to stop durability issues is to use one of these permeable sealers to stop ASR, freeze-thaw, corrosion, carbonation, because in all these cases, if you can dry the concrete out, then you can stop these reactions from happening. So how deep does this stuff go? Well, most specifications say they want it to be greater than an eighth of an inch or three millimeters. But how do you know it's there? Well, you can actually take cores. This is one of my former students, Brian, taking cores out of a concrete structure. You can see these cores where we've We've actually sliced them. We've actually put different dyes, different, different water on them, and you can actually see the depth of penetration. This is Medi's work, okay? Another one of my former PhD students. And you can see we have areas where there's no dye up here, no dye, and then there's dye down here, right? Why? Because this is hydrophobic. The dye doesn't go in, and that's good. So how long does this last? Well, we use these techniques where we could sample bridges and we could stain them and we visited 60 different bridges with ages from 5 to 20 years we took for every bridge we took three cores from the travel lane and three cores from the shoulder and a huge thanks to oklahoma dot for funding this research and this is the results and we know in every one of these bridges when the silane was first applied, it was greater than three millimeters. We have documented cases that at application that the thickness was greater than three millimeters. And through the first 12 years in the traveling and the shoulder, we found all of them to perform great. But after 15 years, only 67%, two out of the three of the bridges had a satisfactory thickness of layer. And after we get down to greater than 17 years, that gets even lower, down to about 20% of the bridges, one out of five, having this satisfactory coating. You're like, what? So what did I just say? I'm saying that in these cases where 70% silane with alcohol carriers were used in Oklahoma bridges, that they lasted for at least 12 years before it started to fail. And the failures were really interesting because we could see that these young bridges had a thick layer. And after 12 years, this was a little bit thinner. 
and after 15 years, it got a little bit thinner. And after 17 years, it got even thinner. And then at 18, we have nothing. In 20, we have nothing. Whoa, this layer is thinning from the inside to the surface. What? Why does this happen? Well, remember, this stuff up here is a polymer. It's like grease or gunk. And the stuff down here is like highly caustic. It has a super high pH, like 12 and a half or 13. It's like the same pH as Drano. And it's, I think, it's eating away at this grease slowly over time. So the failure occurs from the bulk of the concrete towards the surface. And I think it's caused by the high pH in the pore solution. The silane in the pores is kind of like a grease that helps keep the water out. And the concrete pore solution is some kind of cleaner or grease cutter that's eating it away from the inside to the surface. So what can you do after this stuff fails? Well, you can apply it again. You can put it on and it works again. Be careful though. It may be harder to get the material in the second time than it was the first. Thanks so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe to my channel. Leave me a comment. Take care everybody. Adios.